Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to talk about NPCs. I spent an entire game year talking to each NPC once every day, and this is my collection of conversations. I found the conversations quite amusing, but at the same time, there were several periods of time where the NPCs just repeated themselves. I don't know how many other stories or antidotes or antidotes the NPCs have to share because they, they started to repeat themselves. So your mileage may vary. But at any rate, hope you all enjoy. What's up, kiddo? Let's chat. Sure. I want to know more about you. Let's see what story I can tell you. Did the two of us ever have a gab about why we do this? The farming, I mean. Tell me, kiddo, why did you decide to become a farmer? If it feels right, it is right. And you're doing a fine job, too. Today it might be easier to become anything you want. Not that it is possible for everyone, sadly. But for my generation, and generations before me, you have to take into account a couple of things. Family expectations, tradition, responsibility. With the farm, valuable knowledge is passed on, too. Knowledge and its value is nothing you discard so easily. I was raised on that premise, and I knew it. For me, it was never in the question to do anything else than farming. Not only because of tradition, but expectations, the family, and community, too. Maybe all that created or at least helped to nurture the most important thing, passion. I have it, and I know you have it too. Let's get back to what we're passionate about, kiddo. Sure. Any wisdom to share? Let's see if I have some intelligent thoughts left on my old body. Let me tell you, a farmer's greatest asset is the land beneath his feet. But why? Where would you grow your crops if not on soil? You're right. Of course, the easiest answer is to grow crops on soil. Makes the land quite important already. But have you thought more about your connection to the land? Land stewardship, conservation of it, and sustainability in agriculture. The responsibility of a farmer doesn't end with the harvest of good crops. Tending the soil, sustaining it for the future, and investing his time and energy in the land itself is so much more important than just the crops of the season. You're right. First month on the farm behind you, kiddo. How's it going? It's going great. Nice to hear. Don't forget, farming is a learning process that never ends. You will always learn something new, no matter how long you've been doing it. Can I help you with something? Great. Anything on this list suits your precious time, kiddo? I can help with harvesting. I can help with weeding and herbicide. I can help with stone picking. So this is where we could, if we wanted to, take contracts versus the contract menu. Who can help me around here? A couple of people in town can help you, kiddo. We have experts on agriculture, animal husbandry, and forestry. What do you need help with? I need help with agriculture. Sure, kiddo. Although your old grandpa may not be up to date with some things and how they are done today. Talk to my good old helper, Ben. He will explain the basics in detail. What else can you tell me about him? Ben's a rather quiet fellow. He hasn't much to say, except if you ask him about farming. He's been around for over three decades to help out whenever needed. He's deeply rooted in the town and has never left the region. Back in the day, he wanted to have his own farm, but it never happened. Instead, he was the greatest farmhand we could wish for, a good helper that got stuck on our fields. For over 35 years, no less. Now he's getting older too, 
and became more of a theorist you can ask if you want to know about farming basics. But don't expect him to go into detail if you're in the mood to discuss agriculture in depth like a scientist. Thank you. A couple of people in town can help you, kiddo. We have experts on agriculture, animal husbandry, and forestry. What do you need help with? I need help with animal husbandry. Talk to Katie, our local animal farmer. She's a very nice person. Competent, charismatic. She can tell you about different kinds of livestock. She's a trader too, if you think about starting animal husbandry. What else can you tell me about her? She is one smart woman, hands-on mentality and not shy with the animals or the townsfolk. Most of the time, she's just very chipper, if you don't give her a reason to be anything else. Traveled a lot, learned a lot of farming in other countries, and always got an anecdote to share. I don't get her jokes all the time, but I can't keep up with the humor of the young folks sometimes. I see her talking to her neighbor David all the time, or him talking to her more like. Thank you. A couple of people in town can help you, kiddo. We have experts on agriculture, animal husbandry, and forestry. What do you need help with? I need help with forestry. Go to Noah, our local lumberjack. He is a kind soul, even though he seems a bit grumpy. He can tell you about forestry and some of his woodworking projects. He likes to talk about what he's passionate about. What else can you tell me about him? You could call him strange, but in a good way. Don't be discouraged to ask him about forestry because of his moody personality. If you listen to him talking about his family, which is very dear to him, you could mistake him for a grouch. He is not, I can assure you. He is just not that big of a people person when it comes to small talk. Except if he gets the opportunity to talk about one of his wood carving projects. But they are... Mm, peculiar. I'm not sure if he notices that his solutions to some problems are not as practical as he thinks they are. But judge for yourself if you talk to the guy, will you? Thank you. Let's chat. Sure. I want to know more about you. Let me tell you something then. When's the last time you visited your grandma, kiddo? I don't know if she ever told you how we met. If she did, she probably told her own version of the, what do they call it today? Origin story of our marriage. <laughs> As you know, we came from very different families. Me, from a long line of farmers. She, from a wealthy real estate group of folks. What do you think our families made of it? Both families own property. Isn't that a good fit? When her family arrived in town, people were skeptical like people always are. Today, everyone would fear them buying all the land to build wind power plants as far as the eye can see. Back then, there were talks of massive steel mills and chemical manufacturing plants destroying everything in a thousand mile radius. Also, so-called gravel pit lakes were a problem. Even had one of those here in the region. After extracting gravel, companies frequently left the disrupted ecosystem. People expected more of that, but thankfully that didn't happen. Their family bought land, yes, and they built businesses in the area, providing jobs and stability. They even helped to undo one of those unsightful gravel pits. Back to the story, Grandpa. Well, you'd expect the story of how I met your grandmother was just the usual tale of families not approving of a relationship, right? The only people who disapproved of us being together was us, at first, anyway. But you see, they were actually quite active in the community after picking it for their vacation spot. One day, they decided to commit themselves to the area, nourish it. And that's why your grandma and I ultimately met. And oh boy, did we clash the first time. <laughs> I'm sorry, kiddo. Your old pop's got to get some rest now. I'll continue the story another time, 
if that's peachy with you. Sure, Pops. I love to hear the story. Let's chat. Sure. I want to know more about you. Still want to talk, huh? Your old Pops got some things to do. Come back another time. Sure. Any wisdom to share? Hmm, let's see. Have you heard this one? A farmer's footstep is the best fertilizer. Never heard of that. Sounds weird. Every farmer should touch his soil as often as possible. Sure, machines do a lot nowadays. But young, aspiring farmers should step on the soil with their feet first. Grab the soil. Feel the moisture and texture. Our young neighbor from the city, a great guy, learned that right away too. The sooner one gets a feeling for the ground they're standing on, they know what to do. So put your hands down in the soil next time and feel the earth. Sure. Listen, there are things to do. Let's continue another day, shall we? I need to go. Well met. What can I do for you? Let's chat. Sure. I want to know more about you. Sure. Let's have a good old chat. I think I wanted to tell the story of how I met your grandmother, didn't I? So, our families were both active in the town community. Back in the day, there were many more town hall meetings. You didn't just make one of those what-up groups on your phones to talk to your neighbors. You complained about their creative ways of trash disposal directly to their faces. One time, there was actual trash flying around in the town hall, and we owe that to your great-uncle Paul, that old knucklehead. Those meetings were real huddles sometimes. It was fun, especially when your uncle got slapped with a trout more than once. I think you were going to talk about Grandma Pops. Forgive me. Sometimes I digress. Forget the fish. At one of those town hall meetings, we were discussing the forest and wildlife and how we were going to conserve it properly. In the end, it came down to the question of where in the area we'd start a big reforestation project, plant a massive amount of trees. There were one dozen people attending, and two dozen opinions on where that should be. Mainly because your uncle had various ideas and couldn't commit to any one of those. After we unanimously decided to ignore him, there were two options left on the table. My proposal, and that of a young woman with chestnut-colored hair. She did not speak much before. We thought she was just shy and reserved, only reporting to her parents later. But, ooh boy, did we learn not to mistake her sweet hazel eyes, delicate stature, and soft rosy face with faint freckles for anything other than intelligent determination and calculation. There's a reason why that woman made the best decisions for the town and this farm. But listen, don't you have some farming to do? I shouldn't keep you that long. Let's continue another time. I can't wait for the part where you actually met. Sure. Hmm, let's see. Every seed carries more than just a crop. But what else does it carry? Come on, let's train the brain with some interpretation, shall we? Uh, it stores energy in the form of carbohydrates, proteins, and more. Look at the scientist in you. You're not wrong, I'll give you that. You know me by now, there is not one right answer, but many. Some are just some thoughts to humor our brains. In the end, a seed carries all of us. What would we be without it? So do us all a favor, plant some seeds, will ya? Shoot! My mouth got a bit dry from chatting today. Let's continue another time. I need to go. Well, hello there. Let's chat. Sure. Any wisdom to share? Do I look wise to you? Well, thank you. 
There's a saying called every storm has its own winds. What do you think it means? You can't predict the wind? Well, yes. It means the wind during thunderstorms is unpredictable. Strong winds, blowing from different directions. It doesn't follow the usual patterns. You never know what happens next. The proverb is probably not just talking about the wind. In a metaphorical sense, it also suggests unpredictable events and their consequences. Just like the wind during a thunderstorm. Interesting. Let's chat. Sure. I want to know more about you. Let me tell you something then. Okay, kiddo. Let's continue the story of how me and your grandma met. So, when we were at the town hall meeting back in the 70s and discussed how the town would handle the reforestation project, we clashed big time. I don't remember the specifics, but it was about getting enough space for adjacent properties owned by different parties. The property on one side was owned by one family, the property on the other side by another family. Each property wasn't big enough on its own. A small patch in between was owned by your great uncle Paul. He bought it to build and maintain a sugar beet stand. The one where he only sold sugar beet and nothing else, or tried to. I'll tell you another time why that didn't work out. Not that I need to explain why. Continue. Well, let's get back to the town hall meeting. I really was convinced that we could find an agreement between the two families. That's just how it goes. Farmers always settle for something. Although everyone, including both families, wanted the reforestation project, none of them were willing to give up a part of their land, even though there were offers and benefits. Then, this young woman, in her fancy sapphire blue merino sweater, who we thought was just chai, just held up some paper in the air. Everyone instinctively went quiet, and we heard her voice for the first time. I do have another proposal, she said, and did it with absolute confidence. I can still remember how impressive I found her voice. It fit her sapphire-colored sweater. <laughs> cool, crystal clear, a bit deep and smoky, but feminine, soft and elegant at the same time. It's hard to describe. When she was happy and spoke with passion, it was as if the sun shined on the sapphire to amplify its light. Whoa there, Pops. You're old romantic. Yeah, yeah. So as I said, she held up some papers and made a proposal. Then it got really loud. And for the first time since ever, your uncle got quiet instead. Well, now I gotta tell you, my back is hurting. I should lay down for a bit, or just stand here all by myself in silence for some time to regenerate. Is this fine with you? Are you kidding me? Let's chat. Sure. I want to know more about you. My mouth got a bit dry from chatting today. Let's continue another time. Let's chat. Sure. Any wisdom to share? My mouth got a bit dry from chatting today. Let's continue another time. Hey there. Let's chat. Sure. Any wisdom to share? Wisdoms, wisdoms. Ah, uh, yes. A thriving farm is built on effort, diligence, patience, and knowledge passed down through generations or shared with anyone. Agree? And a lot of fun, too. That's right, kiddo. What's most important to me, of course, is passing the knowledge on. You get it, obviously. But it shouldn't stop with the next farmer in line. Today, a lot of knowledge about farming is not present in the minds of the population. I guess I can somewhat understand. The world is a very dynamic, sometimes overwhelming place. People have a lot on their minds. Still a shame, though. But there will always be farmers, and the knowledge will persist. It definitely will. Let's chat. Sure. I want to know more about you. 
Let me tell you something then. I think I wanted to tell you about meeting your grandma for the first time, that feisty lady. So when we were getting at each other's throats at the town hall meeting, it was because of her proposal for the reforestation project. She wanted to bring the government into the mix. Subsidies, they offered. Bringing that up without any details was already enough to light everything on fire. Good thing we didn't meet in the forest with all that flammable deadwood lying around. You can imagine the intense reactions, right? What's wrong with subsidies? See, I was trying to convince everyone to come to an agreement without any state interference, even before your Nana mentioned it. I even offered your Uncle Paul's patch of land as a gesture of goodwill. <laughs> he owed me anyway, because of his silly sugar beet stand that flopped like a donkey's tail. But it seemed hopeless with all those stubborn people. Then, thanks to her, suddenly everyone saw eye to eye, saying, we don't need others to decide. You could see in her eyes that she expected the reaction. She didn't even blink and just calmly waited, checking her watch as if she was waiting for a theater play to end. And among all the stupid questions that your Uncle Paul always asked, this one just made everyone silent and was probably what your grandma was waiting for. How much are they paying? And what do they want? He asked. She just dropped the number and explained they want nothing but a guaranteed reforestation based on approved tree species and sustainable methods. That was all. To every crucial question, she had an answer. And it actually seemed like we had luck and were stupid not to take the deal. It was a rare kind of deal. In the end, we took it. We planted a forest, got rid of that unsightly gravel pit lake, created jobs, made the community wealthier, and the land more beautiful. Nice, huh? Uh, you missed a part. Oh, right. Next time. I promise. Are you kidding me? Let's chat. Sure. Still want to talk, huh? Your old pop's got some things to do. Come back another time. Still want to talk, huh? Your old pop's got some things to do. Come back another time. What's up, kiddo? Let's chat. Sure. I want to know more about you. Let me tell you something then. On the topic of how me and your Nana met, I think I owe some details on how we got to really know each other. Yeah, finally, please. I'll tell you what went down after that town hall meeting. Although we made the deal for the subsidized reforestation in the end, it took a couple of days until everyone slept on it and we signed the papers. Right after the gathering, I was still in some kind of bad mood because the only thing that brought everyone together was, well, money, you know. Your grandma saw me right after, when we were standing outside with one of my friends who owned the farm right next to ours. As calculated and as smart as your grandmother's presence was on this evening, just as sensitive, she appeared in front of me and asked me to talk. So, she made the first step? You could say that. <laughs> I didn't even have to voice my reasons for being a bit skeptical of it all. But she plowed right through it and called me out on it. And then, she really made me see that it was a good thing and an opportunity. We talked, we made a few jokes, laughed at your Uncle Paul, and shook our hands. A few days later, she phoned our home and asked me to help her with the project. And she saw me as one of the key players in the community who could tie everything together. We worked together for months to get everything done. I learned a lot from her about businesses, and she learned a lot from me about farming. First time she sat on a tractor was with me when we scouted the land one late afternoon to get a picture of some nooks and crannies. It escalated a bit as she was having a bit too much fun. That was the evening when your uncle's beat stand was taken down. It was an accident. It was fun, too. 
You trashed your uncle's Paul's beat stand? Um, no comment on that. From there, you can imagine how it went. We went on official dates soon after. We helped your uncle to clean up the rubble that was left after some kids presumably trashed his stand. The rest is pretty much history. I really enjoyed all those 40 years we had together, and she did too. <sighs> I miss that lady. Sorry it took some time to tell the tale, but I didn't want to hold you off and bore you with the story of some old folks. Now it's time for the next generation of farmers. As I said before, this farm is your farm now. Write stories on it. Don't do it alone. It's more fun with others. And of course, you don't need to marry them like I did. Visit me another time, will you, kiddo? Thanks for the story. Let's chat. Sure. Any wisdom to share? Wisdoms, wisdoms. Ah, uh, yes. Let me tell you, a farmer's greatest asset is the land beneath his feet. But why? There's more than an obvious answer. You're right. Of course, the easiest answer is to grow crops on soil. Makes the land quite important already. But have you thought more about your connection to the land? Land stewardship, conservation of it, and sustainability in agriculture. The responsibility of a farmer doesn't end with the harvest of good crops. Tending the soil, sustaining it for the future, and investing his time and energy in the land itself is so much more important than just the crops of the season. You're right. Let's take a rain check on the small talk for today, okay? Paint me green and call me a cucumber, if it isn't you. Let's chat. Sure. I want to know more about you. Taking time to talk to the elderly. How nice of you. I recently drove one of them fancy big modern tractors. You know, kiddo, I'm used to the, let's call them classics. If we call them old timers, I feel a bit like I'd be talking about myself, and I'm only 72. Actually, you'd call my generation's tractors uh, young timers. Not quite old enough to be called an old timer, but still fresh enough to enjoy. That's a nickname that would fit me too, wouldn't it? It would. You're still cool. Well, thank you. So I drove one of the big ones, full of technology. Don't think I'm one of those who refuse new technology and modern machines. If one of my tractors back in the day had those sophisticated cabin suspension technology, my back might still allow me to run around more than I do these days. <laughs> I'm on the fence, I'll admit. Feeling the soil with every bump in one of my older machines makes you really connected to the earth you're tending to. It's almost romantic. But seats and cabins absorbing shocks and vibrations from the terrain is definitely smoother and way more comfortable. I'm not even talking about all those other high-tech features I actually never really tried. With me getting older and downsizing the farm on my own accord, I never got the chance and never really got into the modern tech. But what about you, kiddo? Do you fancy them young timers too? Sure. And I'm not talking about me here. I love old tractors. Good to know. There's no right or wrong anyhow. Well, depending on you, your back, and your farm's goals, there might be. But whatever you drive, you'll have fun with it. I'm sure. Good talk, kiddo. Sure. Any wisdom to share? Don't confuse your pops with a wise man. I know some things, though. Remember, one bad harvest does not define you as a farmer, just as one twister does not define a season. What is your takeaway from that, kiddo? Can't control everything. My dear father always asked four things of me. Prepare for what you know, ask for what you don't, Remain steadfast in the face of challenges, learn from mistakes, and get over them. 
and to constantly train all of this forever. This is my advice to you too. Start training this early with every opportunity you get. Approach everything in life like that, not just farming. You will lead a better life. Paint me green and call me a cucumber, if it isn't you. Sure. I want to know more about you. Testing if my jaw still works. Sure, let's prattle. You know you come from a long line of farmers, right? Remember your great Aunt Sophie? She once did some digging, and I don't mean for some potatoes. <laughs> She was more of a writer, and her machine was a typewriter. She researched our ancestry, going back to the Middle Ages. Our family's known history starts around the 14th century. Not here, though. They came to this country later. You can guess the family faced different kinds of challenges through the ages. What allowed our ancestors to persevere was their resilience and ability to adapt innovative farming techniques, as good farmers do. In the 16th century, our family actually established trade routes and became respected in the community. Some of our ancestors might have laid down the stones where today's roads are built. Isn't that a thought? When the Industrial Revolution came, they had already created their legacy. Although your great-great-grandfather was skeptical about tractors. I'll tell you about this another time. Anywho, agriculture became more and more mechanized, sustainable. The farmstead grew and grew, and then the 20th century came. I probably don't have to tell you about the hardships in the 20th century, kiddo. Hope you paid attention in class. When my father ran the farm, it was all about supplying enough food for the community. This farm we're standing on is rather young, mind you. My old man built it over a hundred years ago, even if everything looks new. We only did some renovation here and there. And when my son, your father, decided to sit in front of his computer all day, it jumped over to you. My own brother did not really help either. He was too busy with his foolishness of a sugar beet stand in the middle of nowhere, where he only sold sugar beet, nothing else. And here we are now. The farm's yours now, kiddo. Here's to the next 500 years. Not building any pressure there, huh? Sure. Any wisdom to share? I have accumulated some information about life over the years. You could say nature's wisdom is the farmer's greatest teacher. Couldn't you? I guess. It teaches one of the most important things to a farmer. To observe. If you don't observe, you can't learn, can you? The weather would be an example. Cause and effect. How do the crops grow? How do the animals behave? And how did it affect the harvest in the end? Observe and think about everything, kiddo. By the way, it works with your fellow people and the world, too. What's up, kiddo? Sure, sure kiddo. Your pops is full of fun facts. Did you know that cows befriend other cows in their herd? They often spend their days grazing and resting together. According to research, they have distinct social hierarchies and prefer to spend time with certain companions. As a farmer, you can observe this yourself. Nice to see you. Hmm, let's see. Don't confuse your pops with a wise man. <laughs> I know something, though. The sun shines after the rain. You probably heard that one more than once. What do you think it means? Where do you think rainbows come from then? <laughs> Leprechauns? <laughs> it means good weather always follows bad weather. 
sooner or later. But you're probably not surprised we're not talking just about the actual weather. Bright moments will follow dark times. Sometimes it's hard to appreciate those bright moments, but always remember, they will come, even if you don't notice them all the time. Well met, what can I do for you? Sure. Sure, let's have a good old chat. Let me ask you, what do you think of today's ever advancing modern machines and what they can do today? For comparison, you might remember our somewhat matured equipment we used around here before you took over. It really is, isn't it? I'm doing this for a while now. Despite all the modernization, there are still farmers sitting on tractors, right? Want to hear a rather amusing anecdote? My grandfather, he was old school, and I mean it in the actual definition. He did everything on horseback, plowing, sowing, getting to town, and delivering his produce to the market, as did most of the others. Horses were the backbone of it all. Back then, a significant portion of his farm was about horse breeding and selling strong, healthy mares and stallions to other farmers. Then tractors became a thing. Slowly at first, then more and more horses were retired from plowing duty. You know what he called his neighbor farmers switching to tractors? Traitors. <laughs> he called them traitors. He had some wild theories at first about what tractors would do to us, but in the end, he adapted, of course. A lot of those city folks still think farmers are only smart when it comes to wheat and potatoes, like our friendly neighbor, that chipper fellow from the city. But what they have to realize is farmers have always needed and still need to adapt. If you're not smart and don't adapt, you'll have a hard time. Other farmers relying on horses and building their whole farm business around horse breeding without adapting quickly crumbled back then. It's a shame, of course, but your great-great-grandfather was smart about it, and that's why the farm survived. He even continued horse breeding and used some. What I'm trying to say is, be smart and adapt. And I don't mean sell yourself while doing it. Think about the difference. Your pops repeats himself, but I trust that you make good decisions. Now go, make some. Sure. Let me think, kiddo. Here's something you might not have known about corn. We all know it's a versatile crop and feeds the world. Animals too. You also know it's used to make ethanol fuel, I bet. But bioplastics? Yeah, it's used for that too. And by the way, I love myself some popcorn. A year has passed. Rather quick, huh? Tell me, kiddo, how did it go? Nice to hear. Now you've gotten through every season at least once. The bigger your farm gets, the more challenging it might become. But you'll manage. I know you will. Sure. Sure, kiddo, your pops is full of fun facts. Ever thought about how early farmers did their farming? Irrigation, for example. Ancient civilizations like the Mesopotamians, Egyptians, and others built sophisticated irrigation systems. Canals, ditches, and reservoirs. It's really interesting. You might want to do some reading on that. Or watch some videos. Guess this is more the style of today's self-education. 